Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel and supporting me. I really do appreciate it. As I usually do, I have four separate items to share with you. The first one is a story about a man named James Esses. The title of the story is My Life Plans Went Up in Smoke. All, ha all I had done was raise concerns about child safeguarding. James was in the final year of his uh, schooling to become a therapist, a child therapist. And he was actually working with children uh, as part of his training. And he became concerned about the uh, transitioning of children to a different sex and all of everything that's involved in that. And so he began to do some research and he studied about it and he decided to speak out because he felt like it was detrimental to the children that he was trying to help. As a result of his speaking out, he was kicked out of school and wasn't able to finish his degree. And so he can't work in his chosen profession. It's another example of canceling and I thought you might be interested in reading about it. As always, I put the links in the description so that you can follow up on your own if you want to. The second item that I have is a Prager video. It's actually a short documentary and I'm not going to show the entire thing to you. It's, it's about 29 minutes long. Uh, but what I am going to do is show you just a little bit of it so you have some idea of what the documentary is about. It, it basically involves um, uh, four different men. Two of them are Palestinians who have gotten out of Gaza and spoken out against what's going on there. And two of them are, I assume, uh, soldiers, uh, fighters of some sort who have been involved in some of the... Uh, wars that have been fought and have seen uh, the treatment of human beings up close and personal when they're under Sharia law. There's one example in particular that stands out in my mind where a man actually witnessed this. Uh, a boy had sex, a young boy had sex, and because he was the eldest son and heir to the family fortune, they couldn't punish him for it, so they stoned his sister to death. I don't understand the logic of that. I don't understand any of it, but there you have it. So we're just going to watch a few minutes of this, and then I'll put the link in the description, and you can watch the rest on your own. What I have been trained to fight against is radical Islam. This ideology is willing to bring death and destruction to our way of life. Even if there's one or two radicals, you're going to be able to change the perceptions of, you know, 10, 20, 30,000, 40,000. I see the different groups that are protesting to free Palestine. You're showing your ignorance because these people wouldn't accept you. I've seen how messed up what you're trying to champion for really is. Shame on you for glorifying terrorism. Yet you're here in this beautiful country protesting for a cause that you'd be murdered for over there because you're infidels. Oh. What Hamas has perpetrated is a crime against humanity. Who dares use my religion to prosecute its They genocide. hate America and the West because we believe in freedom. And it's absolutely terrifying. Before you know my name, you have to know my story. 
When I was little, I used to get candy from the Israeli soldiers. I ate one and it was so good, so I took the wrapper and showed it to my father and asked him to buy them for me. Why? It's forbidden to take from the Jews. There's poison in it. If you eat it, you will die. He said Jews kill children, women and men. They lied to me. At age seven, I used to go to an UNRWA school run by the United Nations. I wanted to become a doctor. I wanted to help people. I respect the teacher came. He said to us, listen children, you must kill the Jews. Jews have three legs and an eye in the middle of their forehead. He said to us, anyone who slaughters a Jew will go to heaven. You will kill Israelis and kill Americans. Why should we kill Americans? They are not Muslim. All the children in school would chant, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, and recite the Bismillah prayer. Kill the Jews, kill America. Kill the Jews, kill America. I didn't feel good. I told the teacher that I wanted to leave. He took me outside to get some air. Ten minutes later, my father came to my class and hit me. And he said to me, slaughter the Jews. It hurt a lot. It hurt a lot. And he said to me, when you get home, I'll be waiting. Serving in Iraq, I've never seen hatred like that in some of the people. They had this belief in this greater cause to, you know, install a caliphate, you know, return to the glory of Islam. First of all, like the vast majority of Muslims are fantastic people. They just want to worship their own way. But you had extremists indoctrinate the youth and, and young men in particular. You know, you have an economic downturn and you have people living in poverty. Those are ripe targets for radical ideas. What you can and can't do are dictated by the teachings of some imam. And uh, that's terrifying to me. My father was dressed in the clothing worn by Hamas. I was afraid. He hit me over and over. He wanted me to become a martyr, to kill Jews. I turned red, then white. I was terrified. בכל הכוח, מי שלא רוצה, אין דבר כזה שלא רוצה. אין דבר כזה שילד יש לו בחירה חופשית. לא, בכוח. וזה עצוב, כן. תחשבו רגע, כאילו, הילדים של היום, של הילדים, זה מחבלים של מחר. זה המסלול, זה החינוך. זה בבית, בבית הספר, בשכונה. זה מאוד עצוב, כן. מאוד עצוב. I grew up in Naharia, which is a Jewish town in northern Israel. I was raised as Muslim. Uh, you know, to believe in Allah, which is God, to believe in the Prophet Muhammad. There was a lot, a lot, a lot of fear about what would happen to you if you're not following all the directions that you're receiving in the Quran and the teachings of the Nabi Muhammad. <laughs> They're either Muslims or infidels. 
America is not good, America is Satan, Israel is not good, the Jews are not good. They brainwash you from a very, very, very young age. Very young. That's enough. I think you get the idea. So, again, the link will be in the description. You're welcome to watch that on your own if you want. This next item I have is an interesting story, and I kind of want to ask some questions about what you think. The title of the story is Plus Size Travel TikToker Says She Almost Fainted After an Airport Worker Refused to Push Her in a Wheelchair Off the Plane. A plus-size social media influencer recently claimed that an airport worker in Washington refused to push her in a wheelchair up the jet bridge because of her size. As a result, the influencer was gasping for air when she was forced to walk off the plane on her own, according to the New York Post. The report said that Jarlyn Cheney had asked the wheelchair for wheelchair assistance during a trip to SeaTac International Airport in Washington. The plan was to have the worker roll the 27-year-old influencer through the airport. <clears throat> Excuse me. The lengthy walk apparently required a lot of energy because Cheney said she was on the verge of fainting after making the journey without assistance. By the time she let me reach the wheelchair and sit down, my lips were white, my oxygen levels had dropped, and I almost fainted. Now, you can go to the uh, her, her TikTok channel and watch her videos, and she actually says that she thinks that plus-size people should be allowed to have an extra seat for free from the airlines. I'm just wondering what you think of that. And my first thought when I read this was, girl, if your lips are turning blue from walking up a jet bridge, you need to lose weight before you die. She's 27 years old. She probably won't make it to 40. It's crazy. I understand that there can be medical conditions and those types of things, but there are also things you can do to help reduce your weight. I know it's not easy for everyone. I'm aware of that. But when you celebrate being obese, morbidly obese, and it's killing you, it, it, it just makes no sense to me. It really doesn't. This next article comes from a news source that I just subs subscribed to called uh, Upward News. This is a news channel that was founded by a guy who was a computer programmer and decided that uh, his family came from Russia to settle in the United States. And he was watching what was going on in our country and he finally decided he could no longer remain silent. So he launched his own news channel to tell the truth. And the article that I'm highlighting today is traditional religion is making a comeback. I just thought you might find it interesting to read about this, and you might possibly want to subscribe to his uh, newsletter. I think it was about $60 a year or something like that. It wasn't real expensive. That's the news that I have for today. And as I say, I always put the links in the description for you. And finally, I pray for you. I pray that you will live an abundant life, that you will be healthy, and that you'll live a long time, that God will keep you safe from harm, and I pray that if you're not born again, that you will be born again. I pray the same thing for every person that you love. But most of all, I pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will let your request be made known to God and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet out.